If you struggle with a body-focused repetitive behavior, or BFRB, I'm going to help you find out your SCAMP profile, and if you don't know what that is, make sure you watch. Before we jump into all that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. You're missing out on lots of great videos. So when it comes to BFRBs, the treatment that is typically used is called the COMB model, a comprehensive model for behavioral treatment. So first, if you don't know what a BFRB is, make sure you watch a video. I'll probably link it up here near the top. But these deal with hair pulling, skin picking, nail biting, cheek biting, lip biting, or really could be any behavior that you are doing repetitively on your body. The first part of this treatment is all about awareness training. We've got to understand why an individual might pull their hair or pick their skin. It's not as simple as just saying, because I do it. When it comes to this treatment, there is something that is called the SCAMP. We've got to understand what SCAMP means for you. So SCAMP is an acronym for sensory, cognitive, affective, motor, and place. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we'll get to it. So this is what I would like you to do as you're going through this video. I'm going to link a paper below in my description for you to print out and start following along. And if you can't print that out, just get a piece of paper and start writing this out. So you think about your BFRB, whether it's hair pulling, skin picking, some other repetitive behavior that you might do, and we're gonna try to understand it. So if we're looking at SCAMP, we're starting with sensory. One question you need to ask yourself is, do I notice any sensations before, during, or after the behavior? Is there a particular texture that I'm looking for? How are my senses being stimulated or soothed through this behavior? Does it feel good? Does it feel bad? Let's say I took skin picking. Do I do it slowly? Do I do it quickly? Do I gouge? Am I looking for anything specific sensory-wise? If you look at before the behavior happens, is there anything that you feel? For instance, some individuals, if they pull their eyelashes, will start feeling uncomfortable. Those eyelashes start poking. It reminds them that, hey, they're there. They're easily there to be pulled. That's a sensation to pay attention to. Or if you have a scab on the top of your head, it might start to itch. You're feeling something before that behavior happens. In the middle of it, like I said, are you looking for a specific texture? Are you looking for something that will possibly satisfy your brain? After the behavior, are you looking for a certain sensation? Meaning, I pulled out my eyelashes and now it is smooth. I need to feel that smoothness. Pay attention to yourself and try to answer these questions the best that you can. Is there anything that you can feel? So when we're looking for C, cognitive, we are looking for thoughts before, during, and after. Are you giving yourself permission to pull? Think about it. Pay attention to the thoughts. You've gone three weeks without pulling. You actually kind of deserve this. Do you have any thoughts or beliefs about the behavior? That like, yahoo, it's summer. I don't have to be around people as often. I think this is a good time to probably start that behavior again. What I find with a lot of these is that they're not very linear like that, that the thought doesn't just follow along that the person falls for. Sometimes it's just like in the back of their head somewhere of like, hey, you know, this is usually a time that that happens. What thoughts or beliefs do I have about this behavior? Do I think it's good? Do I think it's bad? Do I think it's eh? Do I care that it happens? What about what my brain says about relapses? Am I beating myself up because of that? Am I learning from those experiences? Write this down on that paper. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to your behavior specifically. Think about those thoughts. So we're gonna look at the A, effective. These are feelings that you are getting before, during, and after. Do you feel an increasing tension before the behavior happens? Are you feeling an urge of some kind? Are you feeling stress? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling bored? Are you feeling happy? Do you feel good or satisfied during? How long does this feeling last? How long until that urge is satisfied? Do you ever feel disappointed, angry, or frustrated after it's over? Is there shame or is there guilt? When you feel that urge or tension, will it go away without you doing the behavior? How does the behavior affect who you are as a person? What feelings do you have about yourself? Are they negative or are they positive? Think about the feelings before, during, and after for your specific behavior. So we're gonna look at M, motor. We've got to know how your hand got to that specific spot. For instance, did your hand just go straight to your head? 
Or were you reading a book, you got a little bored, you put your hand up on the armrest, you playing with your hair a little bit, and then you're, and then you're feeling around for specific hair, and then it starts. You gotta know, did it just happen? Or is there kind of a progression to that? What hands am I using? Do I use my left hand? Do I use my right hand? Do I use both? What do I do with the skin or hair after? Some people might put that to their lips. Some people might bite the bowl. Some people might just discard it. Same thing with the skin. It's important to know what happens afterwards. Also, am I aware that the behavior is even done? Am I catching myself five minutes in? Say, man, I've been doing this for five minutes and I just realized how much hair I just pulled or how much skin that I just picked. Or do you just know every single time the behavior happens? So let's look at the P for place. It's super important to know exactly where you are. Are you in your bedroom? Are you in the car? Are you in your bathroom? Are you on your bed? Where are you most vulnerable for when these moments happen? I find that most people tend to do this behavior in very common places. Only in the bathroom, only in the car, only in when I'm sitting in my bed, only when I'm sitting on the right side of the couch, only when I'm sitting on that couch that is facing the wall that I know no one's really ever gonna see me, or it only happens when I look in the mirror. It's also important to know, am I using certain tools such as tweezers, needles, or any other tool for this behavior. When you feel an urge to do this behavior, are you going to that specific place or are you doing it right then? These are all questions to kind of ask yourself, pay attention to. So when you are able to fill all of this out, this is called your SCAMP profile. And you might be thinking, why is this important? Why am I doing this? That this is the first part of the treatment, awareness training. We've got to know what is happening what is sometimes driving you to do this? So that we can do the second part of the treatment, which is creating these competing responses. I'm definitely going to make this a two-parter so that we can go over that treatment specifically for you. But this is what I would like you to do. I know you spent time tracking this out as you went along through this video, but pay attention for when that behavior is happening in your life in real time. For instance, next time you feel an urge, take out this paper. Notice what's happening. What are the sensations? What are your thoughts? How are you feeling? Where are you at? If it's after the fact, the behavior has already been done, pull it out anyway. Notice what happened. See what happens. What I really care about at this point is just for you to be more aware of what's happening. Because if you don't know what's going on, how is it supposed to change? Be diligent, fill this out. Sometimes I find with this treatment that just being aware of it in great detail reduces a lot of the tension, a lot of the symptoms for individuals. When I look for the scamp, all those different parts, they all seem to funnel down to one thing, an urge. When they funnel down to that urge, what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna be more vulnerable for doing that behavior. So if we can catch it, so then we know. You just got in the car from school, you put your hand up here on the window, and you're playing with the ear, and you know, hey, this is one of those moments that I've tracked over and over and over again that I'm more vulnerable for. Maybe I should have my hand down right now. Hmm, okay. I'll go over this more when it comes to this treatment. But right now your job, track. Figure this out for yourself. See if you can find some patterns or common themes. And overall, let's take away shame and guilt away from this. Stop it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I don't want anyone going back and saying, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. I know that's a normal, natural reaction, but to actually look back and say, huh, I guess it happened. You know, I wonder if there's anything I can track on this, or I wonder if there's anything I can learn from this experience. If you need to feel the emotions that came along with it, feel the emotions, it happened. But don't beat yourself up. Way easier said than done, but it takes practice. So let me know, have you tracked this before? Have you been aware of your BFRB? If so, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Also, you can help other people by sharing your experiences. Send this to people that you know if you feel like this could be helpful for them. Also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. I don't want you to miss that second video where I'm gonna go through all the treatment. Thank you so much for watching. Before we jump into all that, if you haven't subscribed, some other behavioral. Oh no. Air conditioning, turn it on. I know we tracked out this paper. I. Wait a second, that's for place. Don't put that in there.